Amen. Good to have each and every one here today. If you got your Bibles, would you turn with us to the book of Matthew, the very first chapter. Very first chapter. I hope everybody's had a good week. I tell you, I thank God for the rain we got. Little as it was, he ever drop helped. I don't, uh, but he out to you, it's getting dry out there. But in the book of Matthew, in chapter 1 and verse number 21, just got one verse of scripture this morning. And uh, as we look at it, we want to think about it just simply. Call his name Jesus. And as we were studying this week, I, uh, I was thinking about this and uh, looking at it. And yesterday, uh, we just uh, got in a well, Friday and yesterday, I got to thinking about uh, this and uh, thinking about our young folks. And... Uh, you know, as uh, Christ uh, was on uh, uh, the horizon, I guess, so to speak, you think back here in the Word of God, it had been 400 years and not a word, not one word about Christ, the Messiah, anything from God. And you know, we're in... We're in that situation right now. You think about all that's happening over in Israel right now, Brother James, as we were talking, Christ didn't come last night, but he might come today. He might didn't, he might not come today, but he could come tonight. And he could come any moment now. And as we were watching the news and uh, listening and looking, and uh, Benjamin uh, Netanyahu, he said uh, simply, he said, I'm not stopping the ground troops. He said, I'm not stopping the invasion of Gaza. He said, I'm not stopping any of the might of, the, of Israelis from going in, and I'm not stopping the war upon them that are holding our people hostage. Said our people will be set free before I stop. And, you know, I thought about this and went 400 years, 400 years there had not been a word from God. And here come God on the horizon. Here come Christ after they had been held hostage for 400 years. And God said, I'm going to set them free. Amen. He said, here they, here comes Christ just on the horizon. And he said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going, I had a, a, a name over yonder in the land before, uh, you folks ever, ever came along because it's been 400 years and you hadn't heard from me. I hadn't, you hadn't had a word about me nowhere. And you, if I, if I had sent a word, you wouldn't have listened to me, but said uh, there there was a little boy born over there by uh, by the name of Isaac, and then he had children. He had a young man, and uh, uh, it became all the way down through. And then it said there was a book of uh, uh, begots. There's a little boy. He said. Uh, uh, it was asked him, uh, asked a question, or, uh, a question was given to him. He said, what book in the Bible do you like best? He said, I like that Begot's book. 
He said, I like that. He said, what do you like about it? He said, when it gets to the end of the begots, he said, that's the one that sets me free. That's the one that belongs to me. And all right, in verse number, Matthew chapter 1 and verse number 21, this is the begot that belongs to me. This is the begot that sets me free. And it says here, and it said, and ye, she shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Boy, I'll tell you, I love that name. And for he shall what? Save his people, right here's me, from their sins. Heavenly Father and Almighty God, add your blessings to the reading of the word. Amen. All right, as we begin to look at this this morning, his name, you think about it. I just want to give you a little bit uh, of an introduction to it this morning, and I want to tell you about who he is. Uh, boy, I'll tell you, I, I just I, I just couldn't sit still hardly. Uh, his name, uh, he's the Lord of Lords. Uh, he's the King of Kings. Uh, think about it. Uh, boy, I'll tell you right now, uh, boy, Brother Jake, uh, this this will get you going. Uh, he's a king of kings. Uh, he's precious. Uh, boy, he's pleasant. Uh, he's powerful. Uh, he's a potentate. Uh, boy, I'll tell you, he's a prince of peace. Uh, he's uh, His name is a name uh, above every name. Amen uh, and amen. Glory to God. Uh, his name is Jesus. Uh, just call him Jesus, boys. Uh, I'll tell you right now, uh, that's the name uh, that'll get the job done. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, where you're at or what you're doing. Uh, just call him Jesus. Uh, brother, you just, uh, you're driving down the road uh, and you're having a bad day. Uh, boy, I'll tell you, uh, and I've had some bad days, uh, and you have too. Uh, I'm not here to give you uh, no sad stories, uh, brother, but you uh, just lean out uh, and just say, Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, brother, I want to tell you uh, that there's something uh, down in your soul uh, that'll turn it around. Uh, there's somebody uh, uh, beside of you, glory. Uh, there's some Somebody uh, that's bigger than your problems. Uh, there's somebody uh, that'll help you carry your load. Uh, his name is Jesus. Uh, brother, I want you to know, uh, number one, uh, his precious name. Uh, brother, all you got to know, uh, it's Jesus. Uh, is this God with us. Uh, God is with you. Uh, brother, you can't live without God. God, uh, the name, uh, it's because uh, his father, uh, his word, uh, his father's word, this is the word of God. Uh, and boy, I'll tell you right now, uh, you get the word in you. Uh, and not only that, uh, because uh, you think about, uh, just call his name Jesus. Uh, and look in John 19, uh, he said it. It's finished. Uh, boy, this book is finished. Uh, it's wrapped up. Uh, it's tied up uh, with a bow. Uh, brother, uh, he wrapped it up here in blood. Uh, he wrapped it up on Calvary. Uh, he said, Father, uh, it's finished. Uh, brother, I want to tell you this morning, uh, this word of God uh, is finished. Uh, and because because it's finished, uh, he is uh, his faithful uh, witness lives within me, uh, brother. It's a uh, holy uh, ghost, a uh, holy spirit of God, uh, bro. I tell you, can you say Amen, uh, brother? The Holy Spirit of God uh, lives within me, uh, brother. I know it's real. Uh, how do I know, uh, brother? I 
can feel him down in my soul. Uh, brother, I tell you, the Holy Spirit of God uh, is going to take me out of here uh, one of these days. And brother, the thing about it is, I just call him Jesus. I just call him Jesus. Boy, when I get uh, down and out uh, and I think ain't nobody, uh, nobody cares, uh, nobody there, uh, I just say, Jesus, uh, boy, I'll tell you, uh, there's somebody uh, bigger and greater than I am uh, steps upon the scene uh, of my soul. Uh, brother, I'll tell you, uh, in the last months uh, or the last few years, uh, brother, I tell you, I've, I've sure kept him busy. Uh, brother, I want you to know, uh, brother, God, uh, God can do all things, uh, but I can't. Uh, but brother, I tell you this, uh, I can do all things through him, uh, brother, because uh, he keeps me, uh, he watches over me. Uh, amen. Uh, Brother, he's there. All you got to do is just call him Jesus. Brother, just call his name, Lisa. When you call him, when you call the name of the Lamb of God, brother, he'll step on the car doors of your soul if you really believe in him. And the thing about it, it's a powerful name. It's an almighty name. It's God for us. Look what he said. You know, that can anything good come out of uh, Nazareth? Can anything good come from a little carpenter's son? No, he's not the carpenter's son. He was God's son. He was God with us. He's God in us. It's God all around us. Brother, his name is Jesus. Brother, you say, well, brother, I can't believe that God is so real. Brother, just try God. Just let God rule your life. Amen. Let God live in you, through you, and around you. And brother, you will have something that money cannot buy. Yes. Money can't take it away. You know, man can't take it away. They might take the Word of God out of my hand but they can't take it out of here. Brother, listen, the Word of God is real. It is planted within here. It's superior. You know, Jesus is above all. He's superior to all. He don't count one above the other. You know, you might lose out with this crowd or that crowd. But the thing about it, the only way you can lose out with God is you walk away. You can walk away, but you know God won't, He won't run you down. But you will, you can lose out. You know, God, after a while, the Holy Spirit of God will quit knocking. He'll quit knocking. But he said in the book of Revelations, he said over there in chapter 3 in the closing remarks, that Christ said, I stand at the door and I knock. I just stand there and I knock. I stand there and I knock. But I'm not coming in till you let me in. I'm not coming in till you open the door for me. I just want the fellowship. I just want your companionship. I just want you to come home. You know, I formed you from the dust of the earth. I formed you when nobody was around. I took a little handful of this called dirt. 
and I formed you from the clay and I made you. I formed you. And I loved you so much that I placed you in the place that you are. I looked all over the earth and all over and I placed you in a precious home. And I give the opportunity to whosoever that you landed in to raise you to the point of knowing to do good. And so he set you free. He said, choose you today whom you will serve. You can serve me, but no man can serve two masters. He can't serve God and serve mammon. Serve God and the wealth of this world? No, you can't do it. No fountain can spew bitter water and sweet. You will love one and hate the other, or you will hate one and love the other. No man can have two masters. But he said, I'll tell you what. I'd sure love for you to open my door. I stand in it. I stand and I knock. My God is superior. My Father. My Father. See, the Holy Spirit, Jesus went back to the Father and He is seated at the right hand. But the Holy Ghost of God, the Holy Spirit of God is here. I'll tell you what you do. You just call him Jesus. Just call him by whatever, but you just call him Jesus. But don't never blaspheme the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Oh, what? Oh, but I'll tell you, don't turn him away. You turn him away today, and it's easier tomorrow. You turn him away tomorrow, and it's easier next week. You turn him away next week, and after a while, he'll just walk away. And then one day, he will say, depart from me, I never knew you. Oh, read the book of Solomon. Solomon said, I came down. I came down one night or one morning. I knocked on the door. Oh, I wanted to come in. Oh, I knew you were there because I could smell the sweet odor. Oh, I knew. Oh, I knew. Oh, I came. I came. He said, I came. And the odor was there. Oh, one day you're going to come. And you're going to smell the fragrance of the Holy Spirit of God and you're going to know that He came, but it's going to be too late. Your love, your sweet love, oh, I tell you, you think about it. You think about it. Jesus is coming back, folks. He's coming and the thing about it is, uh, oh, my love, come away with me. But one day, the opportunity is going to be gone. And the thing about it, the power of sin, sin is, sin's condemnation, it'll, you touched on it this morning. It'll just keep, keep on. Keeping on. The power and strength of the conqueror. Brother, the power of God. I tell you, what is it, preacher? It's Jesus. 
He is the conqueror. He is the leader. He is the master. He's the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He's the God of all. The Holy Spirit of God will bring you to him that will lead you out. The preeminent name is needs, needs to be and will be exalted above every name. In Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 9, listen to what the Word of God says. God says this, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him. God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above what? Every name. Every name is above, his name is above every name. Amen. And the thing about it is, it's superior to every name. And he's seated above all. He's seated above every one of us. And he's seated above all. He's supreme over all. And he's sufficient ever over all of us. Brother, one of these days, I'm going to get to see him. One of these days, I'm going to see the one eyeball to eyeball. If I'm fortunate enough to lift my head, when I bow at his feet, my wife and I and another couple and Jennifer, I don't know if you sang some uh, with this, but there was a song that I sung, or we sung, when I bow at his feet. Sung that, and my brother, he'd call me, and he'd say, Dan, I want you to sing this song tonight. I'll be preaching such and such a place. When I bow at Jesus' feet, would you sing that for us? And one thing that I dearly, dearly, dearly regret in my life, every time I'll be a fooling around our house and going there and get the guitar and sit there and gone with it and make a racket and I just sat there and tears run down my face before he died while he could still talk just to Jane and I, we were with him. He couldn't talk the last probably 16, 17 months, maybe, maybe close to two years. And I sat with him and he'd want me to, I could kind of read his lips a little bit. But he said to us at night, He just looked up. Excuse me. He said, Would you sing? I'll wear a white robe. I met Jane talking about this the other night. We've never sung it since. We used to sing it about every church or every revival we'd go to for somebody. We sung here, we sung in Virginia, we sung. Oh, well, I tell you, we went, but you know what we done? We put that in front of our home church. We put that in front of other things. And 
God took the end of that finger. And you don't cord without it. And it's so tender. And I couldn't play much no way. <laughs> but I did. And I used that for an excuse. But I, it was working good. But he looked up and he said, Dane, one day, you'll remember you turned me down. <laughs> I said, no, Tom, you're, you're, but anyway, just do what you can for the Lord while you can, and don't have no regrets, go back, because today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. And the thing about it is, there's many, many things that you can do for the Lord and bring joy later on. Weeping endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. The thing about it is, there is a the Holy, the Holy Spirit of God and a lot of things are hated out there. And He is hated among the world right now. Look in Acts chapter 4 and verse number 17. And we're going to move through this. Listen. In, in, in Acts chapter 4 and listen to what the Word of God is saying. And it is, it's so real. And it says this in verse number 17. And he said, but that it spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in his name. He was hated in that day. That was after the Holy Spirit of God come. As He come, he, the Holy Spirit of God came. And uh, that day, and 3,000 souls, look in that same chapter in verse number 4. Uh, 3,000 or 5,000 souls. Brother, I mean, the Spirit of God was moving. But they said, don't they were fighting against God here. And they said, but it spread. But that it spread, they saying, what shall, look in verse number 16. They didn't want the Spirit of God to move. They didn't want to see it. They said, saying, what shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest. Let me say this. The miracle was done by God. God moved on the scene. God saved those people and God blessed. Why? Because he, the, the church was to be birthed. The Holy Spirit of God was to be moved upon the scene because God had been quiet. That's what's wrong right now. God is quiet. God is silent. Brother, because we are silent. Because we don't call on the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus needs to be shouted from the pulpit. I believe that. The name of God needs to be shouted out. We, there are a lot of preaching going on, but there's not a lot of Jesus being shouted out. There's not a lot of Christ and Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost of God. He is a powerful, sweet, holy name, and He's a prayerful name. And we need to, promises to us are through His name. 
How long has it been since we've spent some time on our knees and on our face before God and calling His name Jesus? Call on Him in the name of God the Father. Brother, you've got to know Him in order to reach Him. And brother, if you want to reach Him, come through. The got to go to the Father. You got to go through the Son. The Son. Brother, you've got to be saved. In Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2, if there's sin in your life, God said, I will not hear you. There's got to be a confession. There's got to be repentance before you can reach the throne of God. And the thing about it is promises to us is through His name. And promises through us. It's, it's real if we want it. It's powerful if we want it. Then, you know, the provisions are granted to us through His name. What needs to be provided? I'll tell you. I need a healing from the Holy Spirit of God. I need a healing. I need to be healed from sin. Because the Bible says we sin daily. I sin daily. I don't mean to. I know there's things in your mind. I may sin and not realize it. There's a sin of omission. I omit the things that may, I should do. There's people that I run into and I don't witness to. There's a sin of omission. Folks, it's easy to sin. God said to pray without ceasing. Boy, and now do you get up of a morning and pray all day long? Do you go to bed at night? Do you go to sleep? I don't think so. So you go, do you pray without ceasing? You sit here this morning in this uh, uh, service, and boy, we should shut up. I'll tell you, I got to go to the house. I wish you'd shut up. <laughs> Just look at that watch. Where's your mind? Where, where, where is it? Where, where is it? You want to get out of here, boy? I got, I. I've got things to do. I, I, man, I wish he'd go. God said, quench not the spirit. How many do I hear hollering, amen? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I've got one or two. The rest of you said, I ain't hollering, I ain't saying nothing. We're in church. In church is where you're supposed to praise God. Amen. You're supposed to worship God. God said, bless His name. Lift up His name in praise and thanksgiving. Amen. But we're... Oh, I wish you would shut up. I need to go to us. I need to go to us. I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear this. Hey man, am I, am I, am I hitting a note that's truthful? I am. I am. I believe I am because I've sat there too and listened to a sorry preacher like me. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I hit a note right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> but the thing about it is, call His name Jesus. His name is Jesus. Last point, we need to preach His name. We need to get through. What does it take to get through? What does it take? The good news gospel? 
there's a good news. And you know what it is? Jesus saves. Amen. That's the news. God will save you. And the better news is God will clean up, revive, and put that spark in your life that you had when you got saved if you will confess your sins and confess Him as Lord of Lord, King of Kings, and precious, pleasant, and holy God Almighty. You've got to renew that faith. You've got to renew that walk with Him. Brother, if you want that grace of God presented to you through His name, it, you've got to understand it is a gift of God. We're entering into Thanksgiving. We're entering into Christmas. And all this world can think about is what to get so-and-so or so-and-so. And brother, everybody is a putting that card out there and laying that card out there and digging a hole deeper and deeper and deeper and trying to impress somebody that they're going to have to dig deeper and they're going to have to try to pay out all next year and just can't afford it. But they're going to try to impress somebody they don't even like. Ain't I telling the truth? The thing is, I want to say this in closing. Faith, pardon is there. Hope is within in the book of Romans, and it's you don't have to turn. Romans 10, 13, you know it by heart. And it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All you've got to do is just say, Lord God, have mercy upon me. And that's when you call upon the name of Jesus. I just want to find, you know, there was nobody in Murray or Joseph's name lintage by the name of Jesus. But they said, they said, God the Father, God the Son, and uh, Jesus and the Holy Ghost and Jesus. They said, call His name Jesus. See, God had this thing all planned out. Call His name Jesus. Brother, I tell you, I could just call that name all the time. And I do. I do. I'll be out working or out riding or going somewhere, have to run, get something. Brother, and I just say, God, please go with me. God, please go with me. And God, don't let me wreck or wreck you. <laughs> Amen. I don't want to send him to the hospital. And I don't want him to send me. But the thing about it is, Faith is generated in us by His name. And the thing is, forgiveness to all sin by His name. And you think about how bright the future is when you get to know Him. Let's stand. See, I told you. I'm through. Are you? Are you satisfied with what you've done or what you want to do or what God wants you to do? God can make things so much better 
if you just call the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father and Almighty God, as we come and stand before you today, either here, Lord, or by internet or some other means today, Lord, I pray to God as this message is being sent by airways or here in this sanctuary. Lord, if you would just touch hearts and God start with me. Lord, that we could just grow closer to you. Confess more that Lord, we're human and we make mistakes, but God, those mistakes are sin. God, when we sin, God, they're not mistakes, they're just sin. And when we sin, Lord, help us, Lord, to confess them. And help us, Lord, to not leave you knocking on that door, but God, to open it. And Lord, I don't want to, Lord, come looking for you after the rapture. Lord, I want to go with you. Oh, sweet Holy Spirit of God, God help us to be what you would have us be. Bless each one in this sanctuary this morning. God, help them to be that that you know they can be. God, whatever the need, whatever, God, their hearts desire in the will of God, help us, Lord, to be that that you would have us to be, to be a better soul winner, a better child of God, Go with us, Lord, to our homes, to our families. And Lord, help us, Lord, to be a better witness. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you in all that we say and do. Amen. God bless you. It's our prayer.